I mean, you've used a few terms there, uh, woodland and forestry, and kind of at times you've used them interchangeably. I'm just, I'm just wondering, could you just tell me a little bit about what your understanding, or what the Woodland League's understanding is of forestry, woodland, and these terms? Well, we, we would be concerned that the terminology has been hijacked yeah. by the timber industry. Okay. And this is a global phenomenon. Yeah. It, and it's tied in with this idea that um, you see it on the Tetra Pak cartons. For every tree we cut down, we plant 10 more. Yeah. The message is trees are good. Yeah. They don't describe the, the methodology of industrialization that's used to make these paper cartons, etc. Yeah. The public are kind of being fooled into believing this tree farming is forestry. And as I say, the timber industry has purposely hijacked the terminology and it uses, describes its um, plant tree farms as forests. When you it say tree describes farms, management. Like the Sitka, the, the, Sitka the monoculture, the, 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 yeah. the one species, single species, even age, um, line planted in straight lines, like harvested. Any other, like any other crop, basically. Like a crop, basically. Yeah. They are a timber crop okay. is being harvested. Okay. And it's not forestry. So we, we should really try to reclaim the word forestry and yeah. make the definition when we're having a debate about the future of Irish forestry, which I think you're trying to... Yeah, that's exactly where we're... You're we're looking at... Yeah. In, in your in your work here, yeah. that we, we need to draw a line between what is what are we, what are we describing when we describe forestry yeah. and sustainable forestry, sustainable forest management. In, in our understanding, is the balancing of the economic, social, and environmental benefits okay. from mixed uh, woodlands. Yeah. Um, so not just about the tree; it's about. The, the ecosystem and the human, the human it's a, element. Yes, well, it's it? about the other, the other benefits that come from well-managed um, forestry or woodland. Mm. And um, like I say, the, the terminology has been hijacked by the timber industry. So they will claim the social benefits and environmental benefits on top of the economic benefits. They have economic benefits from the type of yeah. model, yes, yeah. but they don't clearly show social and environmental yeah. benefits as, as clearly as a woodland that's, say, a native woodland like this. And what mixed. kind of what kind of benefits those those kind of benefits you're talking about? What what kind of benefits would they have in a woodland a wild setting or a more native setting than they would as a, as opposed to the monocrop, the monoculture? The well, the place? management. Sustainable management of, of a forest like this would, would involve selective felling, continuous cover, con maintaining the canopy mm. all of the time, because ground soil always wants to be covered. That's why after a clear fell even, the brambles come back, the ground desperately tries yeah. to start covering itself. It never yeah. wants to be exposed. Yeah. The fertility of the land is exposed heavily by clear felling. And it, on a hot day, the soil is baked. On a, a wet day, it's washed away. Washed away. There's nothing to hold it. We're standing on a deep leaf litter here yeah. that soaks up huge amounts of water in the yeah. winter when these have lost their leaves. And in the, in the summer, as we are now, the rain, rain that falls, nearly 40% of it is evaporated back up into the sky. Hmm. Again, preventing flooding. Yeah. And this isn't happening from our tree farms. You're not getting the same benefits. We don't have this deep litter floor. Um, the management system we would be looking to see happening would be community oriented, small cooperatives that would coppice, use coppicing, managing the, these uh, places. This uh, very, very valuable, the most important land-based habitats for biodiversity and environment are ancient woodlands in particular. Yeah. Of, of which we've point not not two percent of our tree cover made up of. Right. So virtually, so it's virtually, a crisis. Virtually, Vir virtually, nothing, virtually nothing. Nothing left. And yet, you know, we've signed up to the Convention on Biological Diversity. We're sending off reports to the UN on, on our commitment to that uh, declar or yeah. to that legislate. It's a, it's a it's legislation, international law. And yet, we've no management plans for these places. All right. So these are just left here, they're, they're left. They're fenced. As you see, we had to climb yeah. a fence to get in. There's no yeah. information available to the public. Yeah. There's no local person you can yeah. go to as a guide. There's no local uh, connection. Yeah. And there's no gate, there's no access, there's no path. Again, the problem with 
treating these places as box ticking exercises, that's what it is for our SAC commitments, means that in time, as you can see, there are no young oaks. There, yeah. There's no, the oaks are pretty much all the same age. Yeah. There's a deer problem, which has been created partly by the increase in timber plantations. Um, it's provided cover for deer. Right. And there's no management plan in place to, right. to deal so with the deer. The deer are kind of infiltrating deer can't get here, in and, here and they're, just they're eating the they're eating young oaks in particular. Yeah. So That's as part of the management plan of this, the, those young oaks should be given room, thinning, opening up the canopy to allow light, to allow the oaks to grow, or even to transplant the small saplings. We've seen a few tiny yeah, seedlings. Quite a number over here. Actually. They yeah. should be taken, nursed nearby, and then reintroduced. Um, again, what's preferred would be that these pockets of highly valuable habitat, extremely the most valuable habitat mm. we have, for our, like this is a seed bank, a genetic mm. seed bank for, the f for our future, for to reforest the country or for in a crisis losing tree, you know, we are losing species all the time. Yeah. It's places like this hold the key to our future genetic, uh, biological genetic yeah. security and the biodiversity that's locked up in the relationships between the trees and the fungi the mycorrhiza in yeah. the soil yeah. and the herb layer the, the ground and field layer and the shrub layer um, and all of the mosses lichens the what's going on on the trees it's yeah. a three-dimensional yeah. maze of habitat niches yeah. So it's not just all, about all of the that tree. can be spread yeah. if you if you can in, increase expand this woodland. The woodland league are calling for the expansion of these via the rivers and streams. Yeah, that they should be linear. Yeah. Landowners, farmers, quilche where their you know plantations. I was going to say forests. Yeah, uh, even even I'm yeah. fa falling yeah. for it. Yeah, that those plantations are butting up to rivers and streams. They're causing acidification because right. of the needles and okay uh, the conifers are very acidic. Um, there should be buffer zones to allow for these to, to join to the next pocket and we've identified in another part of Clare, in the Octi region, we've identified pockets of woodland, of again ancient woodland, that we would like to see connected by rivers and streams okay. for ecological corridors and basically that way these places will have a chance to expand. They can expand along the corridors so you'd be planting and the, the jay and the squirrel will be planting well, okay. along. Well, then, then. And if you're protecting them, with f they'd have to be fenced off to keep the deer keep away. The deer out, yeah. You're then going to encourage the uh, restoration of the streams and rivers. The, the, the trees protect, the fr um, they will filter the water, the root systems, and will prevent ru runoff from farms, the nu nutrient enrichment of rivers and streams and lakes, which is a big problem. Yeah. It would feed into our commitment to the Water Framework Directive, yeah. which yeah. farmers are going to be getting payment in the next round of CAP. They'd be offered incentives to try and protect the rivers and streams. We, we're saying put a joined up plan together. Um, th they're going to have to do this buffering anyway. Well, insist that it's done with native woodlands. Right. and join it into a plan of linking pockets of native woodland along the rivers and streams sure. and you, you will get a lot more bang for your book. Yeah. So doing, doing the right thing actually makes sense not only environmentally but socially and economically as you were pointing out as well. Yeah, yeah. There, so there's a, there's almost you know, no forest, it, really. sustainable forest yeah. management should mean a win-win-win situation, yeah. a win for the environment, a win for local communities and a win economic, there should mm. be an economic um, kickback as well and that would be from at a local level would be basically from the tinnings and from the coppicing you're creating a local uh, f wood supply right for fuel to replace fossil fuels something yeah. we're meant to be doing yeah and that would create resilience in the local community it basically adds a value to the local economy yeah. And there's money not leaving the economy. Yeah, it's, in, staying, in, it's staying in the locality staying, as well. Which are, yeah, in time, then, as the management progresses, you would have more selective um, grading of, of timber and woods for musical instrument make, for specialists, for furniture making. Furniture making yeah. And you would grade it and also label it, brand it, create a brand. 
of quality and you would get a premium price for it right on okay. international markets even it yeah. could become something we export right so we haven't explored these avenues at all we we keep going back to this we we're, we remain locked in an industrial forestry model yeah. it's all about machines not about people it's about and and even that's becoming more or less economic or not economical because of the price of fuel yeah the cost of getting a harvester to a site is huge the cost of harvesting is increasing yeah. as the price of diesel goes up yeah. and up and there have been cases where some of the for, forest plantation that i'm using this, the word forestry the plantation that have been planted previously can actually be harvested because yeah. it's inaccessible yeah there's a half a million acres identified by the economist colin mccarthy as not being viable commercially right. viable right. and that's that's a lot of waste in, in 1.2 million acre Quilcher Public Forest Estate. Yeah. 